Welcome to Nerdgasm, everyone. Today we're going to be going over the history of Legion. Now, Legion was born to Gabrielle Haller, an Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom, and Professor Charles Xavier, creator of the X-Men. Charles Xavier and Gabrielle Haller had had an affair decades ago, when Xavier was trying to help ease the pain of Holocaust survivors that were institutionalized. What Xavier didn't know is that Gabrielle had concealed the fact that he had a son. And unknown to the both of them, David had been born with the potential to become a mutant. Now years later when David was living with his mother, his home had been invaded by terrorists. And in front of David, his stepfather was killed. Because of this death, David's powers were just unleashed in a very powerful and brutal way. And he incinerated the brains of the assassins. Now because of what happened, David had no idea that he was making telepathic contact with each of his victims. And he was experiencing everything they were experiencing as they were dying. The horror of everything that was happening traumatized David and forced him into a coma. And not only that, he also absorbed the consciousness of the leader of the assassins, Jamal Karami. Skip forward many years later, David is now in his late teens and had gone from being catatonic to autistic. And his mother had also left him in the care of Dr. Moira McTaggart on Muir Island. David once again began to manifest his psionic abilities, and he had no control over them. And accidentally, he absorbed the psyches of two of McTaggart's friends. McTaggart had no choice but to try and ask Charles Xavier to come to the Muir Island facility to help her with the problem. When Xavier arrives, he tries his best to help David, and he tries to make psychic contact with David, only to be forced out of David's mind while screaming, Father. While this is all happening, David also absorbed the minds of many of the people that were there, including Xavier and some of his new X-Men. While he was inside the mind, Mind, Xavier learned that David was his son and that he had multiple personalities and the personalities were calling themselves Legion for they were many. When they get inside of David's mind, it's a battlefield just warring gunfire and tanks completely so real that they don't know if they're in the mind or if they were blasted somewhere else in the world. While there, they meet two of David's personalities, Jack Wayne and Cindy. Jack Wayne and Cindy tell everyone there that they've been trying to hunt down a personality named Karami, and Karami was the reason that David's mind was in such chaos, that Karami was the one trying to take over young David's body. While they're all hunting down Karami, it turns out that this wasn't true at all. Jack Wayne and Cindy were the ones causing all of the chaos inside of David's mind. It turns out that Karami was actually the good guy, and Karami had tried to take all of the personalities that had been born inside of David's head and bring them back into the core persona. And the only personalities that were left were Karami, Jack Wayne, and Cindy. Now I can tell you right now, it was going to be no easy feat to try and get them back into the mines. Cindy controlled the pyrokinesis part of David, and Jack Wayne controlled the telekinesis part of David. But of course, because they're the X-Men, they were all able to work together and realize all of the treachery that was going on, and they somehow managed to restore David's mind to near normalcy, as well as return everybody's consciousness back to their bodies. The problem was, Karami wasn't able to integrate Wayne and Cindy back into David's core persona. So even though David was still better in the head than normal, Jack Wayne, Cindy, Karami, and David all had to share the same mind. This also allowed Jack Jack, Cindy, and Karami to speak through David, the good news is, is that David was no longer autistic, and David's core personality was able to control the body the majority of the time. One of the consequences that David suffered because of all the conflict was that his outer appearance was a little bit unusual, which gives some reasoning to the fact that David has perfectly shaped two foot long hair. A little while later, while still on Muir Island, there was an accident that would have killed some of the mutants that were there if David hadn't allowed Jack Wayne to use his telekinetic powers to save them. The problem with giving Jack Wayne just a little bit of wiggle room was that he was able to take over David's body and he fled to go and indulge his vices. Eventually, the new mutants were able to track him down, but it's David. Even with only one personality with one power, it was still a hard battle. So Magic had to actually take Jack Wayne into Limbo, where she said if you don't give David back control of the body, she would remove him from Legion's mind and kill him in Limbo. And of course, out of fear, Jack Wayne gave up control back to David. Months later, while David was on Muir Island, it was attacked by Donald Pierce and his Reavers for the simple purpose of trying to get back at Wolverine and his friends. While David was in the nursery playing with some of the other mutants who were on Muir Island to act as a safe haven, they heard all of the commotion. Just like last time when David was trying to rescue people he cared about, David had to reach inside of himself and try to use his telekinetic powers. But because of this, Jack Wayne was released again. Now with Jack Wayne in control, the telekinetic barrier that David had created to try and protect everyone, Jack Wayne shrunk to only protect himself getting one of David's friends, Sunder, shot. During the battle, Jack and Cindy both ran wild and started doing whatever they wanted. Cindy even used her pyrokinesis to snuff out Pyro's flame, which led to the death of Stonewall. After this, David was inside of the Muir Island facility when a mutant with the power of precognition named Destiny realized that if both her and Forge were to walk in the facility at that moment, Legion would murder them under the influence of the Shadow King. So to save Forge, 
Destiny had Forge go somewhere else where he would live and just before Legion would kill her, she would let him know that she knew it was the Shadow King behind his actions. What we don't find out till some time later is that Legion killed Destiny because of what she showed him. A future that he was terrified of and lashed out in brutal anger. Of course after this the island battle was settled and Legion went back to his daily routine but under the control of Jack Wayne. He knew what was going on at the island at the time and he pretended to be Legion and acted behind the scenes however he wanted. He also had to imprison Polaris, Magneto's daughter, because she was unaffected by the emotional influence that was being spread throughout the island. And he didn't want anyone finding out that he was in control. Of course, Jack Wayne had to keep pretending that he was David, so he had to help Forge when he needed someone to locate a missing X-Men using the Cerebro unit. What they didn't know is that instead of finding the X-Men, they made a telepathic link with something else, which would later turn out to be the Shadow King. Shadow King. Later on, the X-Men would try to infiltrate Muir Island because they had realized that it was under the Shadow King's control. While on the way, Storm was confronted by Jack Wayne in Legion's body. Now, David had resisted the Shadow King's demands to hurt Storm, but Jack Wayne was more than willing to lay a little bit of smack down on Storm. And because of all the negative emotional influence that was being spread throughout the island, Jack Wayne was actually strong enough to use all of Legion's powers and shot Storm down with a combination of telepathic, telekinetic, and pyrokinetic power. Now, while the X-Men were fighting the Shadow King, Mystique was able to kill the Shadow King's primary host. And after this, the Shadow King needed a new host, and he decided to latch himself onto Legion and use his immense power to just completely devastate the island that everybody was on. I mean, just destroyed it. Of course, the X-Men were able to survive, and the Shadow King would fight Professor Xavier and mock him that he was corrupting David. The Shadow King even said that he wasn't even really controlling David, that he had healed his fractured mind, and David was doing this of his own volition. Of course, the X-Men were able to defeat the Shadow King on the astral plane, but not before the Shadow King was able to use David's body to unleash a powerful telekinetic attack that left Professor Xavier crippled. And when the Shadow King was ejected from David's mind, it left David in a vegetative state again. And even though Professor X was trying to recover from his own loss, he chose to go into David's mind to try and search for any traces of his consciousness. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to find any and had to come to terms with the fact that he wasn't going to be able to help David. After this, David was assigned to an intensive care unit at a hospital where he would remain in a coma for many months. But eventually, Legion would come out of the coma with his mind completely healed after visions of destiny. The mutant that he had killed on Muir Island showed him exactly what his true destiny was supposed to be. Now, even though he was healed, David continued to fake being in a coma and used his telepathic powers to talk to his father in his dreams. And while in Xavier's dreams, Legion appeared as Magneto. And he kept trying to convince Xavier that if Xavier got rid of Magneto, all of his dreams for human mutant kind to come together as one would finally come true. But unfortunately for Legion, he wasn't able to convince his father to kill Magneto. He even reveals himself to his father saying that you should just kill Magneto. It's a good idea. It'll work. But he's Xavier. Killing is not on the table. Eventually, Mystique would find David and try to kill him for killing Destiny. But right before she was able to kill him, Legion came awake and blasted her with his telekinesis and said that he was actually expecting her to show up. And I find this entire thing very weird because there was a time when Legion went to Mystique and asked her to kill kill him for killing destiny and she chose not to of course this was a beautiful reunion for david and his mother finally she has her son back with his mind completely intact and he even calls his mother but it wouldn't last long because david would leave to go and try and find misty he had a message to deliver her from destiny and after that he leaves saying that he was going to fix everything and make it all better what david did was he flew to the desert where he had another vision from destiny and destiny tells him that he has to heal the rift between humans and mutants just the way his dad always wanted and legion being as powerful as he is could easily accomplish this Eventually, Eventually, the X-Men would show up, seeing David constructing all of these constructs out of psychic energy. And when they tried to fight him, he actually sent Storm back in time to the moment where her family died. And Legion taunts her, telling her, you can go save them, go save them. And right before she's about to save them, she was just a little bit too late. When they get back to the present, Storm tells him that I know that this was just a psychic trick and that that wasn't really my family. And Legion tells him, I'm way more powerful than I was before. That was real. I sent you in time and you failed. That one's on you. After this, they try to talk to David, saying that he can't go around doing whatever he wants and david says that even though he's happy to see them don't call me legion because i'm not legion anymore and he's claiming that his mind is completely healed david tells him that there's no point in talking and that there's nothing they can do to stop him from what he's trying to do what he does is he goes back in time to when eric and charles xavier were still best friends but due to an accident where Psylocke, Bishop, and some other X-Men attached themselves to David as he traveled through time, he ended up a little messed up when he arrived 20 years in the past. Due to this, he ended up in the facility where Xavier and Magneto were working. And Magneto actually triggers David's memories, causing David to go on a complete rampage. And he tells Magneto that I'm going to kill you for my father. And I'm going to kill you so that all the things you've done in the future never happen. Of course, Magneto has no idea what's going on and Charles is trying to figure out why someone is in the past trying to kill Magneto for the sake of Xavier. Like I said, Xavier and Magneto 
Magneto are still best friends in this point in time. So when David tries to kill Magneto with a side blade, Xavier jumps in the way of the blade, sacrificing himself for Magneto. Now I don't think I need to tell you guys what happens when somebody goes back in time and kills the person who's responsible for their birth. David and a lot of the other mutants that were there are completely erased from time. And because of this, another timeline was created that was dubbed the Age of Apocalypse timeline. It took a really long time and a lot of mutant power for Bishop to be able to travel back in time to the moment right before Legion killed Xavier. Bishop then took the side blade and drove it through David's chest, canceling the future and restoring it back to how it was supposed to be. Before David died, he saw what happens in the Age of Apocalypse and he apologizes for what he did. After a long time, the New Mutants would eventually go to Westcliff, Colorado, where they were looking for their friend Karma. They would unintentionally discover David trapped inside of a concrete box in the back of a bar. But the voice that was coming out of David was Karma's. It turns out that Karma was looking for a little girl named Marcy, and somehow both of them were absorbed into David's mind. Inside of David's mind, they were running from all of David's personalities, which didn't make sense because he should have only had the three, Karami, Jack Wayne, and Cindy. It turns out that the personalities were being led by Jack Wayne, and they wanted the doll that Marcy was holding, because whoever holds the doll holds control over Legion's body, and they were trying to stop them from somehow getting the Fixers, which is what the personalities called the Old New Mutants team from way back when they helped David the first time on Muir Island. Karma puts up a fight against Jack Wayne and a bunch of the other personalities, but eventually she stopped, and they take the doll from her. The first person to use the doll is a personality named Drexel, who unleashes his power and blasts everybody back. After that, a clown personality takes the doll and fires some kind of energy from his mouth. And then another personality would take the doll and just savagely murder Marcy's parents. And even a personality that can fly that's talking about someone named Moonstar and flying to the moon. Eventually Jack Wayne makes his way to a prison cell that has Danny Moonstar inside of it. He tells Danny that he remembers her from the last time when they tried to help David. And now there are so many personalities inside of there that they're finally living up to the name Legion. Jack Wayne tells her that he's really excited to have the chance to kill her because he had to do a lot to wrestle that doll away from the other personalities. He even says some really creepy stuff about teaching David the birds and the bees before he kills Danny. Luckily for Danny, Cannonball and Sunspot show up and save her just in time. This is when another personality named Sally comes out and she has this power to just grow into this giant hulking David. And after Sally, a personality named Hugh Davidson comes out and he has a weird long frog tongue, kind of like the mutant toad. And when they start beating him, tiny cute little alien actually comes out and he asks them to stop beating on him, that he's a good one, he's not a bad personality. But we can see that the personalities are making him do this. The little alien starts telling them that David was trapped in a place called the No Time. And while he was there, David gathered the psyches of tons of people and they splintered to create hundreds, possibly thousands of new personas. This would explain why it's not just Jack Wayne, Cindy, and Karami anymore. Eventually, David got sad and brought himself back to Earth to try and find the fixers, the people who helped him the last time. But the other personalities didn't want this. And while he's telling them the story, the little alien is creating a wood replica of David in Danny's cell and tries to kill her. But luckily, Magic and Magma make it just in time to save Danny. Magic decides to go into Legion's mind to find Karma, and Cannonball tells her, don't kill any of the personalities. If you kill just one single personality, you could kill David. And if David dies, you die. And as soon as Magic gets inside of his head, Jack Wayne thinks he's safe because he knows that Magic can't kill anybody in there. And in that instant, Magic kills Drexel, the clown personality, and even chops off Jack Wayne's head. Magic started killing personalities that were getting in her way, all because they thought that they were indestructible. After wiping out enough personalities, they finally showed Magic where to go out of fear. After she left, Magic then goes and she finds Karma, Marcy, and even David locked away in a part of his mind. Now that they're all together, the only thing they have to do is find the doll so they can get control and get out. The personalities realize that they could finally get back to using David's body to try and kill the fixer, Danny Moonstar. We get to see a personality with x-ray vision hiding behind an alley wall, looking at them, waiting for magic to disappear. And as soon as magic was gone, another personality with the ability of super speed took over and started destroying the new mutants. Then when Magma tried to take a shot at Legion, a personality that seemed to almost feed off of her emotion just drained her, saying that he wasn't afraid of the heat, and it just left her feeling cold and empty on the floor. Cannonball stepped in, and when this personality realized that Cannonball was invulnerable, it sent out another personality, a Nazi doctor that was actually able to stop Cannonball's powers. And then the Nazi doctor handed it off to another personality who turned David into a werewolf. The werewolf starts completely destroying everybody there and almost killing Danny. But luckily Magic was able to get the doll from the personalities in time to stop him from killing Danny. Now that David has the doll and his impartial control, they put an inhibitor helmet on him. 
And even though David says he's in control, they're very adamant about keeping that helmet on. The New Mutants take David to Utopia. And once there, they help David to sort out his personalities. And they actually put all of the personalities inside of their own little cells. Basically, this is going to keep Legion in check, and he won't have to worry about the personalities taking control of his body and going on a rampage again. We also learned that Marcy was a real girl, and when Karma tried to save her, she was absorbed into Legion. And it turns out that the reason Marcy was absorbed into Legion is because one of David's personalities got out and murdered her. And Karma comes to the horrific conclusion that David can only absorb a mind when he's near them when they die. Karma also keeps the secret from everyone that she killed the personality that killed Marcy using magic sword. It wouldn't be long before David actually came back, and this time he was helping the X-Men. See, the X-Men were fighting this guy named Bastion, and they needed an edge against his Nimrod Sentinels. His dad, Professor Xavier, would show up and tell Legion that they needed his help. And Xavier takes Legion to the part of his mind that houses the bad personas. He tells David that they don't need just David, they need a Legion. And now that Legion has more of an organization in his mind, he was able to actually pick the personality he wanted. And he chose personality 115. David jumps out of a helicopter and starts blasting the Sentinels. And when the Sentinels realize that he has an aggressive mutation, he switches up to personality 762, which looks kind of like a pirate, and apparently has the power of some kind of atomic vomiting. Something that we would find out a little bit after this is that David didn't come back from the no time by himself. There was actually a deal struck with magic, and she's the one that brought him back. But the person she struck the deal with was David's main personality, the Legion, the God Mutant personality. Now this personality is so powerful, he was able to hide himself from the other personalities and even make them forget that he ever made the deal. What Magic wanted the Legion personality to do is to destroy her nemesis, the Elder Gods. And when David showed up and just completely unfairly annihilated these guys, the Legion personality just went back into David's mind, no problems. A little bit later on, Professor Xavier and Dr. Nemesis were trying to treat David's DID. But Professor Xavier had a few problems with just erasing personalities directly out of David's mind. Somehow while they were doing this, there was some reality warping event that happened. And it plunged the X-Men into the Age of X. Now the Age of X had plenty of familiar X-Men, but it was also missing some key characters. And one of the noticeable differences is that Legion wasn't crazy anymore. And he was part of something called the Force Warriors. They were basically living in a war zone every day. And they had to keep applying the wall every day because soldiers were trying to break into Fortress X and kill them. Eventually, though, it would come to light that when Professor Xavier and Dr. Nemesis were trying to erase Legion's personalities, a new personality was created as a defense mechanism. And this new personality took on the face of Moira McTaggart and had the ability to warp reality. Now this personality created an area where Legion would be safe and he could finally be the hero that he always wanted to be. But this isn't what David wanted. In the end, he absorbed the reality warping personality back into himself and used the powers to restore the world the way it should be. In the aftermath of the Age of X, Legion was given a watch to better control his personalities instead of locking them in cells in his mind. The watch would allow Legion to use the personality's power without the risk of the personality taking over David. But while David was training with the watch with Dr. Nemesis, David realized that he couldn't access one of the personalities. He said that there was just a void. David then channels another personality called the Delphic, which will answer any three questions truthfully. They find out that the one personality that Legion tried to access a moment ago wasn't the only one that escaped. The personalities that escaped were Endgame, Susan and Sunshine, Time Sync, Chain, The Bleeding Image, and Styx. Apparently, when David restored reality, some of the personas escaped. The first of David's personalities that they would go after is called Time Sync. And I'm sure by the name you can guess that Time Sync had the ability to control time. The first time they went after him, they failed miserably. Even Magneto was no match for someone who could manipulate the time stream. David would catch up with Time Sync again later on, trying to use his powers to stop him. But again, when someone can manipulate time, it's kind of hard to do anything. And just when Time Sync was about to kill David, Rogue comes out and saves him. The whole thing was a distraction. And now that Time Sync is weakened, David uses the personality that has super speed and knocks Time Sync out cold, right before absorbing him back into his mind. The next personality that they went after was Chain. Chain's power is to spread like a virus, turning anyone he touches into a copy of himself, and that copy is always created with a different kind of weapon. Because of all the weapons that Chain could have, even Magneto was having some trouble trying to put him down. But eventually they were able to stop Chain by finding the original copy. And because Chain is kind of a coward, he basically just gave up. They eventually run into Susan in Sunshine, whose power is to manipulate people's emotions. But Susan's power will disappear if she's unhappy. Susan was able to get Frenzy and Gambit to kiss, as well as get Legion and Magneto to fight. But when they realized that they were being manipulated by Susan, Frenzy just went and ripped Susan's doll head off, which pretty much nullified her powers because of how sad she was over Frenzy destroying her doll. Now that they had three of the personalities, they were on a good track. 
except that Styx kidnapped Professor Xavier. They go to Paris, where Legion is using Time Sink's power to freeze everyone except for the people he wants. And because his personalities are a part of him, only his personalities will be the people outside of the X-Men right now moving. This is when Rogue runs into the Bleeding Image, who has the power to hurt people by hurting himself. He stabs himself to hurt Rogue, and then he sets off a bomb on his chest to try and kill her. David decides to take the fight to Styx. When they get there, they're separated. Styx wants to absorb David's soul and use his body as his new powerhouse. And the rest of the X-Men are left to fight Endgame, a personality that has the ability to adapt to anything, making him indestructible. David willingly gives Styx his body, but what Styx didn't know is that David was using Chain's ability, and it was actually Rogue in disguise. Legion then shows up and defeats Endgame by himself, while Rogue tries to defeat Styx. Unfortunately, Rogue and Styx were both caught in some kind of weird psychic link, and when Legion tried to absorb Styx, he absorbed Rogue as well. Professor Xavier enters David's mind to try and save Rogue, but Rogue's already gotten free, saying that she took a taste of Legion's power. When she leaves David's body, she says that there were personalities being born every second. Unfortunately, as a side effect of the shock of being separated like that, Legion was again thrown into a coma. Legion would eventually come out of the coma and be placed at a monastery that his father left him at. Here, Legion was able to get a better grip on his powers, and he actually had the ability to use these needle gloves to absorb the powers from his personalities when he needed to use their powers. Now, it's been a long time since Legion has had this kind of control over his powers, and it's a shame that he lost it because he felt the death of his father when Cyclops murdered him with the Phoenix Force. Because of the death of his father, the structure in his mind that housed all his personalities was destroyed, and it even created a new personality. David's personalities would go on a rampage due to the death of his father, and David was terrified running in his mind because he didn't want them to get control of him. But when one of David's personalities, Tyrannix, was killing people, David mustered up the strength in his mind to stop Tyrannix and take his power. With this new self-confidence that David had, he told Tyrannix that your power is my power, and that David would take the power whenever he wants. A few days later, David ended up in Japan after seeing a weird vision from a pair of floating eyeballs where twins were in trouble. When he gets there, it turns out that the twins are perfectly fine, and they're actually torturing David. David's trying to keep them out of his head with the psychic abilities from Tyrannix, but at the same time, he's trying to run around his head and get powers. The problem is he's not strong enough to take powers from those that he needs the power from. He tries to tell the kids that you don't have to be what your legacy was. You don't have to be weapons. You can be anything else and you don't have to fight. And getting the twins to believe in David gave him the ability to take one of the powers from a personality in his head. Now, even though David's having this moment with these twins, the X-Men show up. And the X-Men think that Legion is causing a problem and that he's going to do something crazy. Of course, David doesn't have time to argue with them, and there's no way he's going to convince them that he's not doing anything wrong. So the twins use their psychic abilities to help David gather the personalities he needs and absorb their power so he can fight the X-Men. When one of the X-Men named Blindfold goes into David's head, the new personality that was created when his father died rips her throat out and kicks her out of his head. And when David and the twins run to a building where there's a bunch of ammunition in it, one of the X-Men fire right into the building, blowing it up. But luckily, David was able to grab the powers from one of his space benders and save the twins. What he didn't know is that one of the twins had been replaced by the pair of floating eyeballs. David went to the X-Mansion to try and figure out what was going on. That's when he found out that the eyeballs were actually Blindfold's brother, Luca. When he died, he was able to siphon off some of Blindfold's power. It took a little bit of effort and a lot of personalities and powers, but David was able to fight Luca and save Blindfold. But while all of this is going on, the new personality fiend comes out and scares the crap out of Luca, as well as shows an incredible amount of power. When Legion asks him who he is, Fiend comes out in the form of Charles Xavier and calls David's son. Eventually, David was able to subdue the Fiend personality, but only after a lot of help. Now, David spent a lot of time trying to right a lot of wrongs and do a lot of good for the world, just like his father wanted him to. And in this time, David was able to gain an amazing control over his powers, even defeating the Fiend. The only powers that he didn't bother to mess with were the ones that were too big for him, the reality warpers, the space benders, and he kept them below in his mind. Now David wasn't answering to anyone nor was he looking for help from anyone and this turned out to be one of his downfalls. When he went to try and go stop Luca by setting up a situation with Cyclops and his X-Men, it ended up backfiring and the Fiend personality escaped from David and used Luca's eyes as a host. Now the Fiend was already incredibly powerful because he was eating personalities and gaining their powers and now that he was basically just a psychic manifestation with no physical form to ever hurt, he was pretty much unstoppable. David was taken prisoner by sword and thought he was going to be killed. They used what they said was the Phoenix's shadow, which is basically like a younger sibling of the Phoenix Force. And it went inside of David's mind and started eating all of his personalities. David thought he was going to die, but then he realized that it wasn't even eating them. It was swallowing them and then spitting them back out. While all of this was going on, David learned something. 
and he learned to finally unite with his personalities instead of just trying to use them. Now, David didn't combine with all of the personalities, but he combined with enough of them to kick the bird out. And it turns out that this whole thing was just to get him to master his powers so that he could stop the fiend personality. Blindfold starts to get really worried about what David's doing because she's seen the future. And she knows that if David keeps combining with his powers like this, he's going to become so powerful that he can't stop himself. And he's going to be the cause of a large massacre. But David tells her that he has to keep doing what he's doing. He has to keep absorbing personalities and he has to stop the fiend. David eventually absorbs enough personalities to take on the fiend. And when he finally combines with all but one personality, he's able to completely absorb the fiend back into his body. But what David finds out when he absorbs the fiend back into his body is that the vision that Blindfold had is coming true. Everything's coming down around him. His entire mindscape is just being destroyed. And he sees one personality that survived. While Legion's mindscape is being destroyed and the physical Legion is absorbing all of the mutants on the planet, Blindfold is doing her best to help him. And she tells him to listen for words that she couldn't make out earlier. When David finally listens for the words, it turns out to be Professor X saying that he's proud of David. With David hearing that his father is proud of him, he's able to gain enough strength to use one of his powers and reverse time. And he even combines with the Weaver personality, which turns out looks like a giant spider with Legion's head. And the Weaver personality says that David, the entire time, has been just another personality, and that the Weaver is the main personality. But finally combined, it doesn't matter. All of the personalities are together, and David has mastered his powers. But he knows that he can't stay, because there's always the danger that he could do this all over again. So in an act to protect Blindfold and all the other people that he cares about, David erases himself from the timeline. And even though we think that David's dead, he actually saved a part of him and put it inside of Blindfold's mind. And as Blindfold's walking out of her room, she says David's famous line, I rule me. So even though Legion may be gone, he's not completely gone. And like Legion said before he erased himself from the timeline, he was too good for this world anyway. Now that marks the end of Legion. God, it's a long history. Like a really long history. But it is so freaking amazing. All of the artists all of the writers. It's just beautiful. I want to hear what you guys think about Legion. I want to know if you even made it to the end of this video, but let me know what you guys think. Was there a favorite part of the Legion history that you really liked? Was there a part that you just thought was completely messed up? Is there anything else that you guys want to see from another character? Let me know in the comment section below, guys. I want to thank you for watching, and you're like freaking a trooper if you made it through this entire video. Just, it, you're amazeballs. I love you guys for supporting the channel, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.